Hi guys, Delta Dart here with another episode of New Player's Guide to Star Citizen. In this episode, I go over organizations. What is an organization? Simply put, it's Star Citizen's version of guilds and clans that you see in other games. In Star Citizen, though, organizations are so much more, including small groups of friends that want to fly together, ship owners clubs, corporations, paramilitary groups, pirate syndicates, and more. Some of these organizations have thousands of members. The first question you may ask is why join an organization? There are many answers to this question depending on what you want out of it. The first reason to join an organization is training. Most organizations have several members that have been a part of Star Citizen for quite a while and have a wealth of knowledge to share. They can help you with getting your control set up, learning to fly, and taking your first steps into the first, and understanding the nuances of Star Citizen. To a new player, Star Citizen can be very daunting. Finding experienced players to help you get started is a huge help in advancing your enjoyment of the game. I've personally spoken with several people who are frustrated with the game and ready to quit. After taking a little bit of time to walk them through some of the basics that they need to know to play the game, they've gone from ready to quit to thoroughly enjoying the game. Let's face it, as good as we may be or get, there's always someone better at some aspect of the game than we are. Organizations are a good way of finding these people to help you strengthen the parts of the game that you may be weak at. You may be better than them at something else and be able to help them get better with that too. Then you have the social aspect of organizations. Space is a lonely place. Having someone chatting with you over voice communications can make your time out there more enjoyable. Not only that, but if you join an international group, you can also chat with people from around the world and learn about new cultures. Another bonus of the social aspect of many organizations is that they're built off of a community ideal. Members look out for each other and hang out while playing a multitude of different games. Many members of these communities become lifelong, real-life friends. In organizations built with a sense of community in mind, you can be yourself instead of having to behave a certain way to become accepted by the organization. An inherent advantage of playing as part of a group is that you can fly together and keep each other safe. How many times have you gone out to reset a communications array or went in to explore the Kovalex shipping hub and come back to find your ship either stolen or blown up, mandating either a respawn at or a ride back to Port Olisar? Flying with a group can prevent this from happening, or at least reduce the frequency at which it occurs. Someone can cover your ship and fight off anyone that tries to attack it, or at least give you a ride back for a new ship if they can't protect it. Interested in multi-crew ships, but don't have one of your own, or have one, but don't have anyone to crew it with you? An organization is generally going to have several members that do have them, and they're looking for crew. If they don't have one, they'll be looking to serve as a crew on one. The multi-crew ships operate far more efficiently and effectively with all their crew stations manned by real people who are in voice communications with the captain. Also, along the lines of protection in multi-crew ships is fleet operations. Organizations are going to be participating in large-scale operations and will need other ships of various types to include refueling, cargo, medical, and fighter ships. In addition to the multitude of ships they'll need is the people they'll need to operate those ships. If you own a multi-crew ship, particularly a large, slow cargo vessel, you're not going to want to operate it without protection. Organizations can provide that protection through their members that prefer to fly single-seat combat aircraft over anything else. Like I said in the introduction to this video, organizations can take many forms and require a varying range of commitment from their members. I'll go over a few of them here. Corporations are organizations that are designed and set up to generate maximum profit. These corporations are usually centered around industry and transport. Many of these corporations also have supporting positions in exploration, medical, security, and recovery. They generally have some skill standard and or commitment level required of their members, which can vary from position to position within the corporation. Paramilitary groups are generally centered around fighting both in ships and on foot. These organizations are set up as security and recovery groups to provide escort, location security, asset recovery, and miscellaneous combat services. In support of their mission, they may have transportation and medical personnel in addition to their combat-oriented members. They tend to have a formal military rank structure due to the nature of their operations. Their commitment levels can be on the extreme end, ranging from regular participation to frequent participation. As far as standard of skill are concerned, many will be looking for nothing but the best. Pirate syndicates are centered around attacking and looting cargo ships to sell their goods for a profit. Some may be ragtag groups that just enjoy what they do and want to do it together, or they could even be highly organized crime syndicates that do their dirty work with precision and skill. 
Commitment and skill levels can vary widely from organization to organization. These are just some of the basic types of organizations available in Star Citizen. Many of these are built around a combination of the previously mentioned types, or none at all. With over 35,000 organizations to choose from, it can be a daunting task to find an organization to join. I intend to make this task a bit less daunting for you. The remainder of this video will cover how to choose not just an organization, but the right organization for you. The first thing you'll want to do is figure out what you want to do in the game. Do you want to be a pirate, a trader, a fighter pilot, a marine, a medic, an explorer, or you just not really know? It does help to know what you want to do in the verse, but if you don't, be honest with yourself and admit it. There are organizations that offer the freedom to do what you want or to explore your options as they become available and decide then. Next, ask yourself how you feel about piracy and whether or not you could potentially participate in piracy or if any of your friends who play or may play Star Citizen will be participating in piracy. Many organizations have a heavy-handed anti-piracy approach. In those orgs, if you so much as associate with known pirates, you could be removed from the organization. Once you've decided on a career path, if any, take a long, hard look at your gaming schedule and how much of that time do you want to devote to Star Citizen. Many organizations require an intense time commitment to remain a member, while others require that you want a certain amount during a given time period, while others still may not even care about how often you're on. Choose an organization with an appropriate time commitment level for you. Now take a moment to think about how socially active you are. Do you prefer the ability to fly alone when you want to? Do you want to fly with someone else just about any time you fly? Do you only want to fly by yourself? Or do you want something in between? This will have a weight on the size of the organization that would be a good fit for you. Organization sizes range from member counts that you can count with your hands all the way up to multi-thousand member mega orgs. Keep in mind that smaller organizations may have more of a community feel, but you may have a difficult time finding someone to fly with when you want to. Large organizations will generally span multiple time zones, so finding someone to fly with shouldn't be an issue. However, if the organization isn't broken down into smaller divisions, you may lose the community feel of a smaller org, and it may seem like you're just another member. You may find a happy medium with mid-sized organizations, as they're generally just large enough to have people on when you want to fly, but not so large that you get lost in the crowd. Another thing to consider when choosing an organization is how powerful the org may be. A larger org may be more powerful than a smaller organization, not to mention offering more in the way of fleet operations. While CIG intends to keep the larger organizations under enough control that they can't bully solo players or smaller orgs, it's still a possibility that solo players and smaller orgs may have some difficulty if they run into a larger org that is in direct competition with them. Another thing to look for is the activity level of the organization. This takes into account how many members are in the org and how many said members are active within the game and on the RSI website. Smaller organizations can make it to the same activity levels as large organizations, so you can look at the top organizations and know that they are likely to have a high percentage of their memberships flying a lot regardless of their size. At this point, you should have a good idea of the type of organization you want to join. Go to the RSI website, hover over Community, then click on Organizations. Once this page is loaded, you'll see a multitude of organizations on your screen. To find an organization that fits your needs, click on Find, and it will take you to the organization search page. On this page, you can select some of the main points you're looking for in an organization. You can even search by language to find one that has members that speak your native language. Select the options that you're looking for and select Search. Then you can sort your results by creation date, name, size, or activity level. If you don't get many results, remove some of your search terms. Once you have these results sorted how you want them, start going to their page and read their information and see what they're about. Go through several of them and pick a few to research further. Out of the ones you've selected, get in contact with members or recruiters. Jump on their voice communication server, be it TeamSpeak, Mumble, Discord, or some other voice application. Once there, speak and fly with the members in leadership. Spend some time with them in their general chat lounge if they have one. Get to know them. If you cannot get in touch with anyone or join their voice server, drop that organization from your list and move on. Do this for all of your selections. Pick the ones you like the best out of the ones you visited with, create a list of questions, get back with those organizations, and ask those questions. 
Choose the one that feels like the best fit for you after asking your questions. One thing to know is that Star Citizen has an affiliate system which will allow you to be a member of multiple organizations at the same time. This can be a way of getting to know several organizations. However, many organizations frown upon affiliations and will ask you to either leave the other organizations or leave their organization. Another method to narrow your choices down even further, and the method I use to choose Havoc X, is that many YouTubers are part of an organization or have even created their own organization. If you have a favorite YouTuber that features some Star Citizen content, look on their channel as they may have information about the org they are in or run. Even when using this method, still employ the selection criteria from the previous method to determine if their organization is actually the right fit for you. Once you've made your decision, let a recruiter from that organization know that you want to join and they'll let you know what you need to do from there. Don't feel set on this organization though, as they may require you to answer questions that you don't feel comfortable answering. If this is the case, don't join. Move on to your next top pick. Keep in mind though that they may ask those questions and they may not require you to actually answer them. Now for a bit about the organization that I'm a part of, Havoc X. Havoc X was founded by World of Tanks YouTuber Sir Havoc, who's also founded the World of Tanks University community, which has grown to over 700 members since its creation in September of 2014, and Havoc X is now a part of. If you're looking for an organization that will be covering all aspects of Star Citizen, focus on training and practice for all skill levels, and prioritizes maintaining a community feel, come check out Havoc X. For those times that you don't want to play Star Citizen, we also have clans in World of Tanks, World of Warships, and Armored Warfare, as well as members that play these and many other games without being a member of one of our other clans. I'll post a link to our RSI page in the description of this video. Hi guys, Delta Dart here. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. If you're looking for something else to watch while you're waiting on my next video, check out these videos right here and they'll keep you tied over. Until then, keep your guns on target and I'll see you next time.